Hello everyone and welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I'm Miranda here with you to do another fun design. Today I have a heart shaped art stone that I cast from a mold used at the ha uh, from the Happy Dotting Company. Angela over there is amazing and all her help that gives such great customer service from her company so I would suggest you order from her anytime if you're looking for molds. I'll post a coupon and a link to her um, Etsy page in the description of this video. Alrighty and the paints we're going to use today are from Deco Art Americana line and they have such great paints right out of the bottle. You don't have to add anything to them. So for dotting anyway. So today I'm using the Lamp Black Vintage Pink Purple Pizzazz Williamsburg Blue Coral Blush and White from the Straight Up Americana line. And then from the multi-surface section, they have a raspberry, the fruit punch, purple sunset, and turquoise waters that we used for this stone. All right, so here is our lovely stone that we start off with before anything is painted. And I'm going to use the lamp black to do a base coat on this. The base coat is helpful too because then anytime you make a mistake you can just kind of paint it over. I mean, I generally like to think of art as not having mistakes, but if you have a little blip or you drip on it or if the paint does something you didn't want it to do, then you can just kind of squidge the paint off with a silicone tool or wipe it off with a baby wipe and then you can just go over it with some more of your background color like it was never there. And I'm gonna have to wait a minute or two for this to dry because I put too much Okay, so this stencil I received from a company called Craft Dat. They're dotting tools and stencils, and I will leave a link for them down below. And I just thought this was a fun one of the three inch stencils that they have in this multi-pack. Just to show you kind of how you can do a, a design with a stencil, but also put it askew on your piece. So off center, off to the side, on a canvas, on a stone. Just sometimes it can give you a really unique look, which I think we, we achieved with this one. So I'm just going over it with my etcher and now I can wipe off the lines after. And here you can see it from the side, actually pretty decently <laughs> from the side. So this is our first center dot. And I am using the half inch acrylic rod from that set as well that craft at. Half inch diameter. And this is the top angle. And I'm using the turquoise waters. They're just holding the tool perpendicular and I'm using just the center area of where that stencil was. But you'll see when I come up it's askew on our heart. I didn't get quite enough on there so just gonna re-dab it a little into a perfect circle there. You just kind of roll it around so it meets all the edges. So next up I have purple sunset. And for this I'm using my angled spot detailer brush. I'm just kind of pushing that paint into a circle. So making mandalas you can do this kind of plus sign anyway, but I'm going to try to stick to the uh, stencil guidelines, <laughs> which I know you have been watching me for years and know I have trouble staying in the lines and having boundaries. but. <laughs> We'll see how I can do with this stencil. It's a challenge for me too. 
So you can't see as well from the top angle here, but I am just going within the guidelines with that purple sunset. But it is just like the plus sign. And now in this set they have acrylic rods as well and I'm going to use the smallest one which is about the three millimeter size of the largest dotting stylus with your actual dotting tools. So if you have one of the sets from me, if it's the rainbow set, it's the biggest one, the green one. And these are just in between the purple sunset stones that we have down. And the color that I'm using is called purple pizzazz. And so from this angle you can see it's a little bit brighter pinkish purple, I guess. But the dots are about the same size. So even without a stencil you could just do the plus sign and then in between those dots that you have because these are about all the same size. And now I'm switching over to my oval silicone dotting tool. And I do have these in my shop, so if you're looking for any of this stuff, I'll put it all in the description below, but they're usually in my shop. And this is with the Fruit Punch Multi-Surface. So from the side here, you can see the multi-surface being a little bit thicker. It kind of had a little bit of a strand of paint come up with it. You just have to make sure you let it drop back down in your dot instead of rushing off to the side so that it doesn't leave a streak of paint. And I'm just going on the outward area here for these three ovals. Oh, I think I misspoke. I said fruit punch. It's the raspberry. Either way, they're both pretty great pinks. But this way too, it's in line with the dark purple sunset. The thing about the stencils is you can go out a little bit further and keep your symmetry that way. You don't have to do a row of dots, wait for it to dry, do the next row, do the next row. This way you can kind of work your way out in all over the place because the stencil guidelines are there. So that is one of the major benefits I think of a stencil. That and being able to visualize where you're going with it. So this is the etcher tool and I'm dipping it in the white and we're just gonna go up and around and make a little swirl here and then just let the paint run off the tool to make the skinny tail at the end. So you'll see I'm dotting it twice because I need just a little bit more paint loaded on there than the tool allows for. So I dip it in the white, I start here at the little swirl, and I dip it again to add a little more paint, and that hopefully will give me enough to kind of drag it around. And this is something you'll learn the more you work with your tools and the more you work with certain paints. It's not impossible to work with other paints, I just like these ones because they're great right out of the bottle. And I also know how most of them kind of behave. So we'll do all the swirls on the right hand side, and then I'll go back and do them all on the left side. Okay, and from the top angle for those swirls, you can see this is the etcher. And I'm using the Snow White Titanium. And I'm going to dip it and drop off that paint, and then I'm going to go reload it with some more paint. And then pull it around. You could even, if you had a paintbrush or some other tool that hold, held more paint, you could put that down for your dot and then pull the dot out with this etcher as well. And just pull your design out that way too. So whichever is easier.
And these are really just a take your time, bring it up and around, kind of like you're writing the top of a number two. And then just giving it a little tail around. If you draw all the way out to the end and you run out of paint, don't reload the tool and start at the end of the tail. You can flip it and use the metal end to drag out some of the wet paint from the thicker part of your dot and pull it down into a tail. If you reload, you'll have too much on there, so it'll make it a little thicker. You can see I'm just really just taking my time. This is real time video. I try not to do sped up clips as much as possible so you guys can see realistically what it looks like. Now I'm going to go for the other side. And sometimes, you know, your brain doesn't always work well flipping the angle around, so I have to usually turn the turntable to have it where I can do it. This one I'll have to pull it towards myself. Sometimes I'll have to do the swipes away, so it's really just the way you feel comfortable having the piece angled while you're painting it. <clears throat> well, it's kind of like a little bug. <laughs> little wings. So a lot of the terminology that people are using for some of this design makes it seem like you're doing it quick. So like they're saying swishes or, you know, I say swipes usually if it's dragging out the tail. Somebody let me know they're called comma strokes in painting. There's lots of different dot drag, lots of different names that people use, but really it's just taking your time and pulling it, pulling the paint into place. Which really is what I enjoy about mandalas, is that it's more of a peaceful, calm, just take your time. Just really enjoy the process of relaxing and painting, having some quiet time. It's neat how you can see the shape really start to develop here around it too, it's really pretty. All right, so this is the silicone oval tool that I showed you earlier at the other end. So it makes these cute little petals. I'm using antique, or vintage pink rather. And I never really use this color, so it's a little more fluid. I haven't shaken it up well enough, shaken it up well enough here, but you get the idea. You'll see as I put the paint down for the other petal-like shapes that they're actually more of a petal shape. This one's just a little more fluid, so I kind of pull the end out just a little bit to give it that point at the top. You could even take the metal end of the etcher and kind of pull out the end and reshape it while it was still wet. But the only reason this did this was because it's really fluid, so it just shows you how important the consistency of your paint is. So see here? Just kind of pull it out to a little point. But if I wasn't rushing and didn't shake it, you know, if I'd shaken it better, the consistency would have been less fluid. And this lilac meadow is our next one with the etcher. Now we're going to put that in between each of our larger purple dots towards the center here. Now 
Next I'm going to flip over to the metal end. So we just put dots down with the, other, the gold end. Now I'm going to take the metal end and I'm just going to put some teeny tiny little micro dots. Let's do three. I think I can fit three in each section here. Two, three. And we'll just have them all pointing towards that large center dot. So if your design's a little larger or smaller, you can't fit as many dots or less dots, you can fit more dots. Just make it your own. But look, look at how tiny, how much tinier these are than when you get the gold ended tip going. <laughs> so much smaller. And so from the top with the edger, we'll go back in and tuck in those light purple dots in between. So this is another video where I'm doing the side version first and then showing the top version. So I had a lot of great feedback from you guys. Most of you 100% like the side version in there too. Um, and I think it's good, at least especially introducing new tools or a different tool each time so you can kind of see how hard I'm pushing with the brush or how hard I'm pushing down with the etcher and you're touching the stone really with it. So it's you can kind of see it better from the side angle, I think. The design from the top is usually better, but from the side, I think it really can assist in seeing how the tool is used or, hey, that's a real thicker paint. Sometimes the extreme sheen paints have that string. You guys know what I'm talking about, that strand that always wants to plop down wherever. So leave me a note in the comments and let me know what you think about this. I'm hoping to kind of pick up the pace with some more videos these days too so if you guys can help me out even just by leaving any comment or a little heart if you don't know what to say just leave me where you're from or a smiley face just something in the comments helps the algorithm so now I'm gonna grab some of that vintage pink again here and we're gonna use the angled brush and I'm just gonna go down one side and then down the other side and make an arch above the purple sunset dot. So kind of from the base of your oval pink dot down to the purple sunset around it. And so with the brush, you're just making larger dots by pressing down harder. And then you let up as you go down because the brush will hold more paint. So you just kind of let up on your pressure to make the smaller dots. And so we'll do that. So I'm kind of debating in here about going to the outside of the stone with another of the large oval dots and just completing it down the side of the stone, but that's just what I'm thinking now in my head. I didn't draw the stencil down the side of the stone, but I might just finish off the design. I was thinking on doing something around the outside of the whole thing, but I think it would look better on this if I just kind of finish the design down the side like it was kind of like a blanket sliding off or something. I don't know why that's the thought in my mind, but... So see that way you just went down both sides to make like four little petals there above the purple sunset. So now I have the brush again, 
and we're going to put two little dots over the purple pizzazz of coral blush and we're going to do that all the way around each one just two dots in the corner see how I'm bracing my pinky too that'll help steady you a little bit they also have wrist bridges so I'll put my pinky on what I can making sure that I'm not sticking it in paint but there's a lot of products out there like wrist bridges or wrist rests that can help you steady your hands while you're painting so next up we have royal fuchsia and we'll go with uh, let's see Take the brush and we'll just do a couple lighter pink dots of the fuchsia here on either side of our oval dots. And the more I look at this, I really just want to finish off that design, so I, I think I've resigned myself to do that. Alright, back to the coral blush, and now I'll be using the other end of that silicone dotting tool again to make some petals underneath the pink we used here. And so a lot of times we're dotting, we try to keep things separate, but I'm just going to kind of tuck them right in next to one another so that they overlap a little bit. Kind of like the head of the tip of a pineapple, you know, the leaves at the top of a pineapple, how they kind of start spiking out. Kind of with that in mind. That actually gives me an idea for a future pineapple design. There, so that was is coral blush. It's a little bit darker. I really like this color. And again, we're just going underneath each of those larger ones. And see how I rock back and forth? This actually, you can see it better from this angle. You're just kind of rocking it back and forth a little bit to get that point at the top. To make the little leaf petal look. And all this spinning is exactly what I talked about earlier about having it where you need it. And this is kind of gives me the ability to arch over the painting a little bit, but at least get it the direction that I need to to place the dot. So there, especially with the setup, the video setup, there's a lot of finagling of lights and moving of cameras and I'm working around a lot of equipment, so all right. Fruit punch and the brush in the art studio. No, I'm just kidding. So I'm starting at the top of that pink and we're going to work our way down around and make one little arch around this. And then I'm going to reload it again so it'll start off a little bit bigger and then work our way down and around again. So you're totally capable of doing this design without the stencil. It's, it's something that is definitely possible without the stencil. You just get used to seeing where things are placed. When you start mandalas, you start in the center and work your way out. But this, you'll once you get the base ones down, this dotting around these would be perfectly fine without the stencil lines. You can see here too, it went from larger dots down to smaller. And then start in there again and up and around our little white swirls.
And this isn't the only way you can use a stencil. I mean, stencils, you can take a sponge brush and just take one color of paint and go over the entire thing and then fill it in. So you could have a whole different look, have an entirely new background color. And I could have done the whole thing with a sponge brush in white and then fill it in. You could outline it and just do everything in dots. I mean, there's just so many ways, and even using the same stencil every time, you could probably have hundreds of different designs, different colors. Somebody asked me recently about using stencils, and I personally, I just don't generally use them because I like to be more free-flowing. And this does allow for some free flow, you know, choosing your own colors, your own design, to go into the stencil area. I just have a hard time sometimes with boundaries and having guidelines there. I feel more restricted, I guess. But if somebody sends them to me, I'm more than willing to try them out and try new ways of doing them. Now we're just going to go down the other side too, just finishing it off with that pink um, on both sides doing the arches around. And I feel like you guys don't need it from the side, every little detail, but at least you get an idea to see working with a brush as opposed to the stylus or the etchers or the silicone tools. That way it just kind of gives you a glimpse of how it can be used. So since I'm getting back into this more, I'm just kind of thinking of new designs that I can come up with. But if you guys have any ideas or thoughts or colored palette ideas, feel free to put those in the comments too. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And once the comment section is up and going on my website, I'll post a link on Facebook and Instagram and everything to let you guys know. Because I think I really want to move over to um, my website more than just the just being on the social media. This is coming along nice. We'll go back to that purple pizzazz now. And we're gonna follow our guidelines that we've already put down on the pink. And we're gonna follow it around just a little space away. So we're not right on top of one another. So you have a little bit of space away like the stencil has. But it'll just be the next row we're putting down in the same exact shape that the pink dots are. So if they're down first it makes it a little bit easier. You can just follow the guideline. And we'll do the same large dot at the top and then graduate the dots down to smaller sizes as you go down. And again I'm just going to do the right side first and then I'll go back and do the left. If you start to get too much paint on your tool or even your brush, I usually just wipe it on a baby wipe or a paper towel. And that way it kind of helps you keep your dots uniform because you're using just the same amount of paint. So in this too, you can see I'm using my other hand to use it as a rest. So I'm re just resting my wrist on top of my other hand here. And that also helps you keep a steadier hand when you're dotting. So this is the tropical pink with 
well, I keep wanting to say pipette. <laughs> it's an acrylic rod. See the drip of paint coming down here though? I want to let it get back to the center and I'm going overlapping the top of our oval one and the coral blush petals that we made, like the pineapple head of the pineapple leaves. I'm going to overlap all of them with this dot and we'll just kind of roll it around here as the acrylic rods are so you can get the paint evenly spread. And then we'll do those three. Alright, so next I'm going to just kind of look at the screen here because it gives me a better view if I take a picture or look at the screen away from it. But yeah, I really think I'm definitely going to finish off that design in a minute. So, Alright, so now I'm going to take the brush and the turquoise waters and we're going to do four dots. So we'll do one at each of the base of where our outer pink dots all meet here at the bottom. And we'll just kind of connect all those through here. And that way you have one at the base of each of those rows of dots. Okay, we're going to grab the raspberry again. And I think what we'll do is in each of the petals we'll do a little pink dot of the raspberry at the top of those petals. Like that. And just kind of keep our colors flowing throughout the piece so it's not s totally separate with just purple in the center and then pink on the outside this way you're bringing the raspberry to the center and I'm going to grab the metal end of the etcher tool here like we did for the tiny tiny purple dots we're gonna do that here down the side I'm just grabbing from the dot because the paint is still wet and that way you end up with the perfect amount on the tool I just grab it from the wet dot and do two little dots down the side of each here just to kind of fill in that space for the petal. I don't always feel the need to fill in space. Sometimes a negative space where you haven't placed anything really can be an asset to your piece, but I'll just tuck some in there. All right, so now I'm just gonna go back to that raspberry and I'm gonna start fixing the side, which I just wanted to finish off the design down here. Now, mind you, I didn't draw with the stencil off the side, um, they don't bend really well. Like Happy Dotting Company has silicone stencils and they're flexible and there's a couple other places selling them now. They're flexible around the stones. Um, so this one I'm just going to have to wing it without the stencil line. So you can see too it's a challenge on the sides of the stones because if your paint is too thin it will run down <laughs> the side which you don't want and also trying to work with your tool on the side. It's, it just creates a challenge. So this was that fluid pink. 
So I'm just going to try to pull it up so that it doesn't dribble down. And then I'm going to actually probably pick up the stone and blow on it a little bit just so it kind of gets a, I don't want to say skin like pudding, but it gets a edge that starts to dry so that it'll hold the paint in place, especially with the multi-surface ones. But this way too, you kind of have to babysit it for a minute just to kind of let it not run down the side of your piece. All right, so I'm going back to my brush here and we're gonna do the outside pink lines really quick. And so I'm just kind of following the design in my mind and then working around the white swirls that I have here. So I'm sure if you took it off of here, if it became a flat print, it would not be anywhere near the appropriate size, the appropriate size to the other ones, but it works down the side here. So now taking the coral blush while the pink is dry, and I'm going to dot on either side of the base of each oval. And you really have to gauge for yourself how much of the negative space you want to fill in, but I tend to look at it a picture of my piece or a look on the screen or I step away for a couple minutes and come back to look at it because sometimes you just need a fresh set of eyes. So this is one of the angled styluses. It's probably a two millimeter for this one, the blue of the set that I have with the rainbow set. And I angle these tools myself. I do sell them in my shop, but they come straight from the company. They're straight and I have to bend them all. So it just makes it easier to see where we're placing the dots. And many of you already have these tools because I've been selling them for years. So if you've been following me for a while, you already know all this. But we've had a lot of new people come into the community, which is amazing. Especially just looking for a calming kind of Zen art space to be in. So one big old dot of that coral in between where all the purples meet. And now I'm going to go back to the petal making end. And this is going to give it kind of a different look here. So we're going to outline with the small petal end of the silicone tool. And I'm using the Williamsburg blue. Now we're just going to follow along the purple to kind of create another outline edge here. But you can see how fun it is to do different shapes, ovals, and these petal shapes, and the swipes. It just kind of adds a little more to the mandalas. When I first started them years and years ago, I was only, only doing dots. You gotta branch out, I think. It's good to try new things. Plus it's fun to see where the design will go. You just can keep doing the same design over and over and use multiple colors and even that changes it. And then just changing up one or two little sections or adding eight dots instead of six or six instead of eight. It's like a new adventure every single time. I think I've related to that before by saying it's like the choose your own adventure books as a child, you know, you just turn to page 58 and you get a new ending or turn to page 76 and get a new tangent adventure. I don't know if other people actually read those books, but they were ones I really enjoyed as a kid. And you can see too from here, I'm just rocking the tool. I really think this angle is better for that. You're just rocking the tool back and forth to get the full point of that petal. Which this tool is great for that. You could do petals all over it for flowers, pineapple leaves. It all just depends on what you want to create.
So you can see too, I really have to pick up the stone and be steady here because I have it lifted up in the air in order to get the side a little easier. And don't set it back down and get your paint wet, wet paint on your turntable. Just make sure it's not going to touch. Thankfully it didn't. Alright, I'm going to tuck a few more of the petals with the Williamsburg just to kind of bring that color in here. We'll do it on either side of those corals, just under the large section of the white swirl. You can just barely fit them. That's another thing too, I think that's a benefit of the stencils, is your spacing is less off if you're new to doing mandalas or if you've even been doing them for years sometimes it can be a challenge to get the perfect spacing so, so I'll have to look around the whole mandala so if I wanted to put these in here I would have checked this space all around each side to make sure I could fit that petal shape in there before I did it but with the stencil you know the spacing is a little more precise so that I can just tuck them in there's a divot in that stone there or something I just had to t fix the paint Okay, back to the turquoise waters. And I think I want to fill in that space just below them and have it kind of pointing at the center. Just because we have that kind of going with the purple in the first round. And so we'll use the turquoise water and the micro side of the tool. The mini metal and just kind of bring it down with a few maybe probably three dots on each three or four towards that purple dot there now if you don't have this etcher tool you can use toothpicks you can use mechanical pencils and dip the lead i mean i've i've really gotten to the point where i feel like i've dipped almost everything in paint in my house to see what it'll do so it's great it's budget friendly um, with supply issues nowadays, it's very helpful to just see what you have already in your home. Okay, we're going to bring that light blue out to the edge here too, just to kind of break up our line there and give a little finish to the edge. So the turquoise waters is lighter than the Williamsburg, so you can see the contrast in the colors here. Alright, so we're going to tuck a few of the white dots with the brush on the side. See how that big pink dot is dripping a little? It'll hold, but this I'm going to tuck the white here on both of these sides and do a little triple dot here on the top of each of these coral dots. We'll just do triple, three little dots, two for base and then one up top like a little pyramid. And one more up here. And then I'm just kind of looking around to see where else I might want to bring the white into the center. I could put top dots on the purple. Maybe I'll do one in the middle, I think. I think I'll leave the purple dots the way they are. We'll just use the angled stylus here and pop one right in the middle there. Alright, so just so you can see it here from the side, I have the paintbrush. I'm just going to put that white in the center with the stylus so you can see it here from the top to just kind of finish off this piece. Just like that. So now I usually look over the piece and it came out pretty well. 
So here's our completed stone. I just superimposed the lettering. I didn't do that, but you could do that with some acrylic pens very easily. So I just want to thank you all for spending your time with me tonight. I hope you had an enjoyable time watching and or painting this. And I'm so glad to be back with you all. And just a heads up too that there are bloopers on the way. So stay tuned if you want to see some mess ups. Alright, so as many of you know, I am not always as eloquent as I seem to sound on the video because it's narrated or gone over or edited. So here is the blessing of some ridiculous mix-ups that happened in this video while it was in the making. I hope you enjoy them. Please go easy on me and I just want to help you guys to have a smile on your face. So take care. Enjoy the bloopers. Hey guys, welcome back to Miranda Patron, Patron, bleh, Patron, can't even say my own name, Patron. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Miranda, oh my goodness gracious. Blah, 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 blah. Hello everyone and welcome back to Mandala Patron, Miranda <laughs> Patron Art, Miranda, who am I? Yeah, Miranda. Oh my gosh, that pump just not stop. Alright. So, going back. What is going on? Hey everyone, Miranda Patron Art here. No, it's the wrong page, and I'm Miranda, not Miranda Patron Art. Drama, I guess is the only way I can put it going on on there. So I try to post everything I can here. Now I started a blog section. If you go up into the tabs, it is not there. So I'm going to have to figure out <laughs> where that is. Huh. That's really funny. I'm going to leave this blooper in there for y'all. All right. So if you just scroll down on the main. Alright, so we'll just go through some of the colors that we are going to be using. Oh my word. <laughs> Apparently I drank a little too much coffee today. I can really do it this way. <laughs> yeah, see all those steady painting hands you see in the video? Not always. <laughs> Trying to hold the camera, this is not working. And the water pump's going in the basement in the background. Awesome. Okay, so next you're going to take um, the Tropical Punch, that is the wrong camera, where am I looking, oh, hey guys, <laughs> alright, so here is our, our, oi, what did we paint? Alright, so here is our finished art. Art, art, art. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, so here we have our finished art stone. And just again, a little shout out to. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> no, mommy said bring it upstairs. Please bring it back upstairs. Okay, bud. Thanks. Three, two, what? Okay, so here is our finished art stone that we have painted from the Happy Dotting Company. No, 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 no,